we start off with the rigger's inspection. He first of all looks at the change of serviceability and repair log in Form 700 to see that nothing has been put unserviceable. Then he positions himself well in front of the aeroplane so that he can get a rapid general view, view of it. Thus he gets an immediate impression of the trim. A tire down, low pressure in one of the oleo legs or other faults will be noticed at once. Now he is going in to start on the first group, the undercarriage. He inspects this for damage and then gets under the wing to look up at the retracting gear, which also he assures himself is undamaged. There's often a good deal of mud, especially on wet days, owing to the wheels being drawn up into the recesses, leaving some of the mud they've picked up behind when they're lowered again on landing. So the rigger gets busy with a rag and carefully cleans the joints, pivots and fairings and re-greases as necessary. The undercarriage, when raised or lowered, is locked into place by means of pins controlled by cables and it is the rigger's next job to see that these cables are not slack. The oleo leg comes next. The pressures should be normal. He can check whether this is so or not by noting the sliding portion of this is exposed for not less than three and a quarter inches. If there has been excessive oil leakage, the sliding portion would show signs of this in the form of streaks of oil, and of course the leg would be low. The sliding portion is kept greased, and grease may pick up grit, so the next thing he does is to clean the old grease away and apply fresh. He then lubricates the glands through the nipples. Two turns with the grease gun handle per nipple. He now turns his attention to the tyres and tests them for pressure using a pressure gauge. Now the outside of the tyres for damage. This is a very important part of the inspection, as at the high speed at which the Spitfire lands, a weak tyre may be the cause of a serious accident. That finishes the rigger's undercarriage inspection. The next part of the aeroplane to be done is the cockpit. He is examining the gauge which registers the pressure in the air containers. This must be at least 270 pounds per square inch. If it drops below 250 pounds, the guns won't fire effectively. Now he is trying the brake lever. The action of the rudder bar not only moves the rudder, but actuates the wheel brakes for control when taxiing. Thus, a turn to starboard applies the brake on the right-hand wheel, and a turn to port the brake on the left-hand wheel. He is testing the rudder movement and seeing that it gives sufficient pressure in either brake. The pointers on the air pressure gauge refer to the brakes on the wheels. Port, starboard. When both brakes are on, the pressure of each should be equal, as you see here. He leaves the parking brake on. Thus he keeps the aeroplane still for the rest of the inspection. He will check the pressure gauge when he has finished his inspection to see that the air pressure has been properly maintained in the system. That is to say, if the gauge drops back, it will show him there's a leak somewhere calling for further investigation. Now he operates the control column and makes sure that the elevator has a full and free movement. And the same with the ailerons. The 
Then he operates the rudder bar and sees that it gives free and full movement of the rudder. Note these tabs on the elevator and rudder. They are the trimming tabs. Their position is controlled by these two wheels. This one controls the elevator tab, which gives the aeroplane nose trim. In order that the rigger can watch its movement from the cockpit, he lifts the elevator, which brings the tab into his view. He now operates the control and sees that it has full and free movement. Likewise, the rudder trimming tab. He operates the rudder bar until he can see the tab clearly and then tests out the control for full and free movement, in both cases seeing that the play is not excessive. He now checks up the nose trim indicator and sees that it agrees with the position of the elevator tab control. He operates the landing flaps. The undercarriage is normally lowered by the operation of a hydraulic system. But should this, for any reason, be out of action, there is an emergency system controlled by this lever which is sealed up. The rigger must see that the wire sealing the emergency system is intact. For if it had been used, it means that the hydraulic system has failed and will have to be dismantled, cleaned, inspected and refilled. While still in the cockpit, he inspects the safety harness attachments for security. He pulls the harness shoulder straps and sees that the release gear works properly. He next examines the hood and windscreen and sees that they are clean and free from cracks. Then he seats himself in the cockpit and draws the hood over to see that it moves freely. He is now seeing that the latch in the closed position holds and can be released. Sliding the hood open again he tests the latch in the open position in the same way. That finishes his inspection so far as the cockpit is concerned. And he now turns his attention to the fuselage, which he inspects for dents and cracks, particularly on the underside. This brings him to the tail unit and he examines the surfaces of the fin and tail plane for damage. Then the fabric coverings of the rudder, elevators and trimming tabs for damage and loose stringing. The rudder and the elevator hinges must be kept lubricated and he gives one turn of the grease gun handle for each nipple. ends his inspection of the tail unit group at the tail wheel. He inspects the caster unit and sees that the main spindle is not broken. He sees that the tail wheel tire pressure is normal and examines the tire for cuts and damage. Finally, lubricating the hub bearings with antifreeze grease. Two turns of the grease gun handle. Now he goes to the main plane and inspects its skin for dents, cracks or loose rivets, which will be detected by cracks in the paint. Then he cleans out the wheel recesses, which are apt to get mud in them from the retracted wheels. He examines the wing flaps for damage and distortion.
then the aileron fabric coverings for damage. The rigger has nearly finished now. He sees that all cowling, panels and inspection doors are securely fastened and gives a final look round to see that he hasn't left any rags about. You remember that at the beginning of his inspection he left the parking brake on so that he could check the system for leakage. Now he has another look at the pressure gauge and finds the system in order. The rigger has now completed his part of the daily inspection. All that remains to do is to complete and sign the maintenance forms.